Hello everybody. Welcome to Claro Beauty. This is Claudia Lara, your host. So today is another episode of what life has taught me or what would I have liked to know about life? Um, something like that. Working on the name. If you have suggestions, let me know. But that is the topic. So if you're interested in makeup, this is not going to be one of them. Although, of course, I'm wearing Lisa Eldridge Bold Lipstick. Uh, on, what's the name of it? Uh, da, 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 strawberry, strawberry Chalk. If you want to see what I'm wearing, I'll link the video down below. And I'll catch you on the next one. So now the topic at hand today. Oh my God. And I don't think I, I'll have a lot to say about it. Perhaps, maybe. We'll see. This is a topic about, you know, parents kind of delivering um, their ancestry to their children. <laughs> I know, I don't think I'm saying it right. You know, uh, in a race, when somebody is holding like the Olympics, they're holding that big fire kind of thing, and then they run and they meet another and they pass it, and then the other one has to run, you know, and they keep running until they get to where they place it to kind of have the fire throughout the Olympics. I see it like that. I see that parents or a generation, there's a moment that they have to pass this storage, storage. What is it, the fire? You know what I mean. And um, usually it doesn't totally finalize until the mother or the dad dies because then everything energetically really gets transpassed to the children. And usually it goes in order to the firstborn, then the secondborn, thirdborn. And, and I'll get to that in a different video, how that works. It's a lot of family constellation or things like that. But um, this thing about what, what gets transferred, what, was, what gets passed on, it's, it's very interesting. And sometimes it gets passed on little by little in, through life. And sometimes it's just all at once, once a person dies. And sometimes it's a little bit as if you get lucky and see your parents get old and sometimes ill, but nevertheless, it goes gradually. And so they keep losing their life force or they keep losing their power. And it, as that is happening, it is being transferred to you, whatever they're holding. And um, and this is so also easily transferred because remember, we hold the same DNA or a lot of the same DNA, especially woman to woman, you know, mother to daughter, because we've been in their wounds, we've been in their bodies. And so there's this, we have lived inside of them. So, and made out of their soul. <laughs> So, I mean, like, uh, it can also be met like earth, you know, if you, you know what I mean. So there's so much that we are already receiving in memory of cellular memory, DNA, right? So there's a lot of things that we intuitively, not intuit, not even intuition, I guess we biologically understand about our parents. And I think that the reasoning why is, uh, because we have part of them in us. Uh, I mean, if you think about it, we're 50-50, right? So we have a hundred of one, the dad, and a hundred of the mother, per se. You know what I mean. So, so that's why I think between children and parents, um, there's so much understanding without words. Uh, and there's been experiments in physics um, where, I don't remember right now the name of it. What is the name of it? Oh, if I find it, I'll put it down, what the experiment's name is. But it says that when you have become one, when you divide particles from something that is being one, it doesn't matter how much distance you put the particles, how much apart, if you change one, the other one is affected. Isn't that so interesting? So, if you think about it as humanness, if we are born from them and we were one at some point, 
That means anything that happens to the child is the mother is affected and vice versa. So everything that is happening with the mother is affecting the child. It doesn't matter if you're mad at your mother and you haven't seen her forever or uh, there's distance among you. It, it's this connection. You are connected uh, until dead do us part, right? <laughs> and then it becomes a spiritual if you believe in all that, but I'm not, I'm not going there yet. So, um, so there's this thing, there's this placement from the mother and the children in order. And uh, in my view, each, each children is the teacher. So each children came to teach something to the parents. They hold something that the parents haven't seen on themselves, or I would say, uh, um, you know, a, a better version, you know, a newer version of the previous thing. I know some people don't think so. They're like, I'm much better than my children or my children or the children say, oh no, my mother was much better than me. You know, all of those belief systems come across, but the truth is we are moving forward, right? So generations come with newer capacities and especially more adequate for what's on hand, what is on present moment, right? So in essence, the children are always better versions <laughs> collectively than the previous models, right? So in anyhow, however, there's this continuity, continuity. I hope I'm not losing you, but I want to go back to how I started is this process of turning the church to the new generations and, uh, and what that entails. Sometimes I call that process individuation. So, um, and by that I mean the children, since they came from the, from the womb, from inside the parents or part of their parents, their whole life story is to individuate, separate from that, from that, but not as two different things, but kind of coming into your own, utilizing what you come with. And that's, that's one of the things that I always um, like to refer when the parents die and you, you've heard this thing about, yeah, they're living through you. And they're like, no, my mother's not really living through you. Well, no, don't personalize the individual. It's just the DNA, the cells, the knowledge, the wisdom, the memory, it is living through you. So in essence, they are with you. I mean, if you think about it that way not as a soul, individual personality, but just as, as biology uh, increasing and enhancing and getting better. Does that make sense? Am I making it too confusing? So how can I make it more tangible? And we'll, and we'll wrap it up. Um, so in, in a way you inherit the, the burdens, the heaviness, the responsibilities, the tasks at hand that your ancestors have been holding and growing. And once you inherit them, now it's up to you to heal them, <clears throat> transform them, get them better, choose differently. And that's how we're creating our life's story, not only for ourselves, but generations. You know, we're creating what we're creating in the world. I mean, some of the new generations are angry for some of the decisions made before because of what we're doing to the planet, if you believe that or not. But, um, you know, we keep constructing and we keep uh, manipulating what nature is giving us with food, with nutrients and all this jazz, which is needed really to live. Um, and so the new generations, as our teachers, because remember, new generations usually are our teachers, are saying no more of that. Uh, and in that, I don't think our generation or previous generations ever did it out of malice, uh, mostly out of ignorance, or most of it also about trying to create better. It's just when you create better, sometimes it doesn't work. You know, when we started manipulating food, industrializing food, we always thought so we can all eat, so we can create in, in big bunches. You know, when we started killing insects with pesticides and things, we thought, oh, we're gonna rule the world without those insects that eat our fruits, you know, things like that. So I don't think it was developed out of malice or totally, we wanna destroy the planet. I think we wanted to be better and more effective for all of us. And then 
we saw that our intervention is not working or is making it worse or it has implications, right? So now the new generations are coming to, to tell us, hold on, you need to detour, you need to change it a little bit. It didn't work how it was intended, something like that. Uh, but back to the individual, and uh, I hope I haven't lost you with that, but it's interesting seeing in the collective and then seeing in the individual micro, mother, daughter, and of course there's father, son, but I'm talking here mostly from the, from the feminine side, I think. Um, so to make it more here, um, concrete or tangible, there are things that your mother has carried and, uh, and things that she hasn't solved and so it, it lands on the firstborn first and a little bit on the next ones. Now, if the firstborn doesn't start transforming it or clarifying or clearing it or making it better, heal it, then it does transfer to the second born, then the third one, and then the fourth. So it's kind of a, a, a chain. Uh, and so that's why each of us need to take our place and assume the responsibility of our place. And and not more than what is yours, but uh, just be aware of it, I guess. Being aware that that is happening and that we do have to become our own individualized from our parents, which means a lot of their tradition, we might decide not to keep. And which means also some of their tradition we do wanna keep, right? But it is the free will, it is our choice. And what is our purpose? Well, to become better to become a better species, to, you know, be better, not only for ourselves, maybe at the beginning for ourselves, but we also want to be better as a species, everybody, right? I think that's part of the journey and part of this uh, birth and dying and birth and dying. So as our parents die, that whole generation sort of dies with them, that whole core, purpose that they had and we grab some of that but then now we have our own generational purpose and then we will transfer it to those that have come after us and they will have their own generational purpose you see so that's it that's what i wanted to say are we aware of this and let me know what you think do you agree or disagree but this is something that i have learned and i have lived and, um, and I'm still uh, trying to figure it out, the effects of it. Uh, but I do believe being conscious of it, there's a big word, but being aware of it, being, you know, at least give it one thought is important. Which parts of your mother you have or are carrying or is transferring and what are you doing about it? And are you, uh, shaking it out, clearing it out, making it better, resolving it, affirming it, and really uh, protecting it from moving to the next generation, right? Because why not? Do the most that you can. <laughs> we are not going to be able to fix it all or heal it all or transform it all. Of course not. That's the whole point of evolving. But we do what we can, as much as we can, with what we have. All right. Thank you very much. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. Uh, please ring the bell in the right hand corner. Please comment down below. And let me know, do you guys, this kind of episodes, am I pushing it far? Should I open a new channel for this kind of thing and keep the makeup with makeup and these sort of thoughts uh, separate? I'm trying it out. So this is the second uh, video that I do of this way. And I'm open, I'm really open. But let me know your thoughts. Uh, thank you very much for watching and, uh, and I'll see you next time.